It has not even been a week since the WWDC event and Apple has already sparked a lot of controversies. So let's not waste any time and get right into everything Apple should not have done this WWDC. So the first one is not exactly something wrong, but it still hurts right here. So the iPhone 7 does not get the iOS 16. That's, that's so sad. But it's fair, it's been six years since that phone launched and no good thing lasts forever. I mean, the closest Android can ever get is Samsung promising four years of update. Apple is still giving five. So not exactly bad, but still, it's sad. The real problem actually starts with the next one. It's the iPhone 8 and 10 actually getting these updates. So the iPhone 8 gets the iOS 16. Great news, right? Oh my God! Wow! But it misses out on some massive features. The cool lift subject from the background feature? Yeah, no, say goodbye to it. Live text in videos? Nope. Quick actions in live text? Gone. Smart dictation? Haha, <laughs> bye. Using keyboard and dictation simultaneously? I think you get the point now. If you're not already sad enough, I have something much worse coming your way. So these features don't work because the A11 chip does not have the power to deliver these functions. Remember which other phone has A11? Now this makes up for like 50% of features that Apple announced on the stage and the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 do not get these features. Apple is being a real big Okay, even if I decide to believe Apple for their A11, A12 justification, how do they justify this? So the iOS 16 now allows Face ID to work in landscape mode. That's pretty cool. Should not have been too difficult for Apple because the iPads have been doing it for like, what, since 2018 now? But this feature is only coming to the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro series. Okay, let's get to the iPad OS now. So this year's biggest feature in the iPad OS is Stage Manager, right? The, that pretty cool Mac OS-like feel. It's, I mean, it's borrowed from the Mac OS Ventura. Now, let's see how Apple ruined this feature. It's M1 iPad exclusive. Wow, are you kidding me right now? So Apple justified it by saying that to run Stage Manager, you need something which is called a virtual RAM. And now with this year's update, iPad finally gets a virtual memory swap. But now here's the deal. Apple also said that to run virtual memory swap, you need at least 128 gigs of storage. So that means that all iPads above 128 will get virtual memory swap. Now here's the deal. M1 iPad Air 5th Gen base model is only 64 gigs, which means it does not have virtual memory swap, but it still gets the stage manager. Mm. What does that mean? So what should we think? Apple is obviously lying, either about the M1 part or about the virtual memory swap part, because it really does not add up. Mac OS Ventura is no less either. Remember that cool feature Craig showed us? The continuity camera using your iPhone as a webcam, that cool desk view feature. Yeah, it's only coming to the iPhones XR and above. Oh, yeah! Now, all of this is Apple just trying to frustrate their users, trying to make them upgrade, and that's honestly super annoying and just unfair. But there's hope. So the iPad OS code has revealed support for stage manager with older iPad models too, which basically means that Apple can still in the future turn this feature on for other iPad models via software update in the future. Maybe they're still testing it because you know, September is a long way away. Okay, so let's rewind. In August 2018, Apple turned into the first $1 trillion company in valuation. Two years later in 2020, they became the first company to cross the $2 billion benchmark. And earlier this year, they became the first company to reach $3 trillion. $3 trillion. Damn! They have created products which stand out, give you that sweet ecosystem flex, and give you that sense of exclusivity over other brands. And that has been the USP for like forever now. But now this exclusive club is further segmenting within themselves. And that is leaving the users unsatisfied, betrayed, and overall annoyed. We can only hope that Apple either gives a solid justification or changes their mishaps. Either ways, what do you think about this? Is Apple doing an unfair business? Is Apple exploiting their own consumers? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to stay updated about everything Apple, do download our iGeeks blog app. This is Rhythm. I'll catch you in the next one.